Hello, it's us. You're listening to Sex with Charlie and Nina again. It's season three, episode six. It is. And today we were joined by the absolutely gorgeous and smart Bee Ducks. Yeah. How adorable was Bee Ducks? Ugh. She's a dreamboat. She's a bloody dreamboat. Yeah. Um, but before we start, just quickly, quick word from our sponsors. Yeah. Not really, it's us just saying <laughs> Talking stuff. about it. We're sponsored actually by Bang Boom Creative, who is the only creative company you will need. Yes. Throw all your money at him. Yeah. Because you need that. So he does our fo- he does our photos. He makes the intro for our YouTube. Yeah. And if you didn't know, we do have a YouTube channel. Um, we have, which now you can watch all the videos on, can't you? Yeah, watch all the videos of the episodes. They're all recorded. They're all there for everyone to listen to. Um, but if you do want to support the podcast financially, then all we ask is £3 a month. For £3 a month, you can buy us one coffee to share. Yeah, one set of eyelashes that we can wear one eyelash right. each. <laughs> It's, it's not much, is it? No, we know it's hard times for everyone. Yeah. Um, so we're just keeping it simple. And if you can afford to throw us the money and you enjoy our content, then we're at Patreon forward slash Sex with Charlie and Nina. All the links are at, on our website, yeah. which is www.charlieandnina.com. Yeah. Um, and if you want to support us in other ways... You can share our posts on Instagram and Facebook. Twitter. And Twitter. Um, You can like and review the podcast on your channels. Yeah. Um, Recommend us to your friends and your family. Yeah. Enjoy the episode. Bye. She's dog mum to the cutest pup on the internet. She's girlfriend to the cutest pip on the internet. Content creator, absolute rocket, and the best thing to happen to the BBC in absolute years, it's B. Hello, B. Oh, my gosh. That is the best (laughs) intro I've ever had to anything. My smile. Oh, my gosh. People love an intro, don't they? I think I might just start introducing people like that in real life, in yeah. normal situations. What would your intro have made be? Here we fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about her. <laughs> It'd be short. Oh, my God. Brilliant. How are you? Oh, God. How was your week? How are you? My, so I've just been in um, in Wales for the week with Pip um we went for a little week away because it was his birthday on 3rd of August um so we went and um and just ran away to Wales for a week and it was absolutely lovely but this heat man it's not good I don't enjoy it Pip's not that much of a fan of it being hot loves the sun loves to um he's the type of guy that will whap his shirt off and be walking in the sun to get a nice tan (laughs) through all the hair but uh (laughs) Finley has like he's got like a short face so he can't deal with the heat. So oh. we were just like in lovely Wales, just kind of cooped up in a cottage until sundown. For the whole oh, week. nice. It did look beautiful though. I was looking at the pictures and it did look absolutely idyllic. Yeah, it's lush there. I love Wales. I want to visit more often. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's so close as well, isn't it? I don't know why we don't go to Wales. There's loads of places in the UK. Yeah. yeah. Like, to, <laughs> like nice little scenic little spots yeah. that you can just get away. There are. It's proper lush. It's proper lush. I mean, it is like it feels like it's really close, but it is still a lot of places in Wales are like a six-hour drive away. Like where we went was four hours, and I've I've just passed my driving test. Oh, so I've been like, I'll drive us next time. And he's he's not he's not very keen on me. Um, <laughs> Rose Tutor, I don't think he's a little a little bit of a simp really because he's like, I just want you to be safe and drive safely on the roads and. Oh. All right, just let me get out there. Have a good time. And he's um, he's being he's being a bit a bit more dad than daddy at the moment. Which is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> quite sweet. Just want you to be safe. All right, babe. Let's go. Oh, bless him. He's a good boy, isn't he? 
Yeah. <laughs> he's been on like three different speed awareness courses though. So he's kind of chatting out of his ass of it. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. well, well. Well, that's the thing. Once you've got your confidence on the road, suddenly all the rules go out the window and you just think, oh, just, you know. I'm excited really for that. Cool. Yeah, and I'm being kind of like spoiled a little bit because my friend Jane, who's a um, little boy I help co-parent, she's like filling up her vape while she's driving she's just like we're having a full conversation she's not even looking at the road and I'm just like Jane please look where we're going this is very scary but she'll just instinctively move out the way of things it's mad it's the confidence I need a little boy that you co-parent did you say yeah so we've got a little boy called Harley his um mum and dad's still together living in a very happy little family unit and but dad does work a lot so from when he was born I've kind of been like mummy number two which is quite sweet and he 100% is now at the age where he knows he can use that to his advantage he'll like come up to me in front of Jane and go mummy um I (laughs) really like some sweets and I'm just looking at Jane like have you already told him no (laughs) she's like yeah I have (laughs) but he knows that's That's so nice as well to have someone like because I know that I'm in a very privileged position having Charlie because yeah. we help with each other's kids. I mean, yours are older now, so not so much. But, like, I feel very lucky to have someone that you can share that with because yeah. it's, it's so tricky. Like, even as a two-parent family, it's hard to do everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, um, it is massively. We've, um, we've got another little one on the way as well. She's coming up to eight months now, and we're going to have a little girl. Wow. It, it, feels, it feels weird saying, like, we. Like, we're pregnant. Yeah. Well, but like he's he's that little boy is oh he's like my mum thinks of him as her grandson and it's all very it's a lovely little blended family which is nice yeah. So, yeah yeah that's and they're cool. now at the minute so if you hear any um like theme songs for really annoying kid shows that's yeah. what's happening <laughs> I think normalize this blended family business because it always used to be that way like you know, people did used to live in really small, like, little groups, didn't they? You'd have, like, your grandparents living with you and things like that, and yeah, it's just not like that anymore. Yeah, and I just think, like, if, like, a child is just getting loved by more people, what is everyone's judgment on it? Yeah. Like, what? what's your problem? Like, that kid is getting loved by everyone, and that's, Mm -hmm. you can have as many people love you as, as you want. There's not, like, a limit absolutely that's the whole argument for um single parent families and same-sex parents like it's as long as the kids get in love what's the issue as long as they're being raised in a in a polite and kind environment who gives a fuck yeah I know that's the thing I don't know why people get their hot on their high walls about it like I know more people from like a male and female parented family that have suffered childhood trauma than I do people that have had same-sex parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what? I don't, it's so mad, isn't it, that people have an opinion on it? You just think, fuck off. You do. You do think fuck off, actually. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and we tell them and fuck like, off as well. <laughs> all the, like, extra hurdles that, like, adoptive parents have to go through, like, they have, they've got several stages of finding out if they're ready or not to be parents, whereas people that are in male female relationships can get pregnant by accident and then find out three years in oh actually I'm not cut out for this yeah that's what surprised me that they they I had a baby and then they just let me walk out with a baby like no questions asked I could be anyone yeah (gasps) I know that's what I was shocked about as well I was 20 when I had Oscar and I was just like oh my god like you're just letting me just have this baby I'm 20 years old (laughs) you had but yeah you go through more to adopt like a dog don't you like they're checking out all sorts of shit but with a baby they're just like see you later (laughs) enjoy have fun yeah Yeah, like so adopting Finley I think I sent like a 10 minute video of me walking through the house and then going through the back yard and being like, and this is the back. And then if I walk up this hill, the beach is right there. And this is where he will sleep. And I'm going to get a step so he can step into the, I like, I, I sent like such a long video to be like, please let me have this dog. 
And even still, like if there was a few dogs before Finley that I couldn't adopt because I didn't have a flat big enough or because I was too too short and too small and they were a big Rottweiler and like I've I've rescued Rottweilers my entire life. Don't come at me and tell me that I'm too small, yeah. okay? Not well, nice. it's mad considering you can go out and buy irresponsibly from like a puppy farm if you if you really wanted yeah. to. You could just walk out and buy whatever dog you wanted and then bring it back. No one knows anything. You could literally keep it in a cage for the rest of its life. No one's going to know. But like, yep. they're going, no, sorry, you can't have a big dog. Or no, sorry, the climate is not correct for a chihuahua. Yeah. You just think, well done. let me love these animals. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I could adopt them all, I would. I've had to be held back by Pip and Jane a few times because I've just been like look at this dog that needs a home and they're just like no we have enough now actually this is enough is, there, is, <laughs> it, is it ever enough no it's not <laughs> no. Deserve siblings yeah my ultimate dream is buy a farm on a big bit of land just loads of dogs and the animals and just look after there's them there's a few people life. whose dream this is maybe we should all club together share the dream get a massive fight yeah yeah Yeah. i love it get one of those manor houses yeah yes whenever harley's dad isn't here there's only like there's a livery yard over the road and there's only like women that work there and so when i come over we're all just like doing all the diy and getting on with stuff and it's like living in a big female commune it's yeah it's the dream that's the dream yeah just no men well, well, I mean, we'll have some dotted around just for eye candy. I wouldn't mind like a like a, a farm hand that wore Levi jeans and no top all the time. Oh, Ooh, yeah. yeah. With like one yeah. of those like, pitchforks and all he's doing is just sweating and just... Yes. Hey. We're wearing we that. can like dress. roll a can of milk at him. <laughs> yeah. like, crack it open. Like, oh. Amazing. Yeah. The communal I'll tell you man. What, <laughs> I got it like properly made with Pip because the last time I was here for about two weeks, he, Pip's like perfect idea of an evening was to come over, cook us lasagna, eat a little bit and then left. And that was just like, this is how all men should act. They should come over, cook, clean up after themselves and then go home. It was oh, fucking hell. Do you want to do a timeshare? Right. When they leave, it's <laughs> like, yeah. oh, great. And I love it. Like we well, live, he lives yeah. in six and I live over the river. We've got no intention of living together because no. Ruined it's just it. no. Ruined the fantasy, didn't it? Yeah. It's well, hard to miss to each other. People, isn't it? It's hard to mm-hmm. live with people. It's different when you're like in each other's pockets all the time. And if you're the kind of person that likes their own space. Yeah. Then, you know. Yeah. Why I want a chance to miss someone as well. Yeah, that's the thing about them leaving. They yeah. leave when you're having a nice time. So yeah. then you don't think, can you fuck off now? I hate it yes. when they're that day they're welcome. Yeah. So I want to be like, don't leave me. And then just be like, thank God they've left. I'll see them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as soon as that door's closed. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <sighs> yeah, I love that, like, every partner I've had. He's like the first partner that I've been in a relationship with and not moved in with within a month so and it's that was all on him he was very much like I feel like you've got to get your own place and have your own space and then we'll see and it's totally backfired on him because now I'm like we are never living together you're not allowed <laughs> to stay too long I'm going to come to you and then leave which you know it's worked quite well <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I'm all again the that. dream it just works doesn't it it just works yeah. with my farm dream because then they can they could have like a granny annex, couldn't they? Away from the main building. We don't want them in the main building. Oh, yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah. That'd be so good. We can get them on those little like Wendy houses and just put it <laughs> in that. Yeah, just a few yeah. men just like li- milling about in this like house. Yeah. yeah. And then they just come it's to our cookers lasagna and move some hay around and look sexy. Yeah. Yes. A dream of men. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, right, have that's them on it's hot enough already in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, I just want to quickly ask you about your most recent endeavor with the BBC. What's happened there? Oh, I honestly, it's still very much 
they are uh, they've let me in and i don't think they've realized that i'm not the person that they <laughs> no backseats <thought. laughs> <laughs> i've got like my little uh, lanyard now that i can like beep in and out and i'm just like i've i've never given this back now this is <laughs> I, I live here and i work here now thank you very much but yeah i've um it was it was part of a I was approached by Facebook years ago to be like part of a diversity program because I'm a little I'm a little queer yeah. and uh, through them I got an email saying oh the BBC are offering four people a, a creator residency for six months and I sort of applied to it thinking there's no way because I've not been involved in anything like this before there's people that have been on like six month courses with the diversity program that are doing it um, and they apparently just loved the little video I sent in being like, I'm a, I'm a queer sex worker from Lancashire. Give me money. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Works every yeah. time. <laughs> every time. Every time. Every time. Yeah, every time. Love it. <laughs> but yeah, and then I had a, um, a second interview with them, just like kind of talking about if I was to make a TV show, what ideas do I have? What show would I kind of want to make? Um, and they were apparently very impressed with how I had fully formed ideas and was like, and this is the camera angle that I want to start with and the couch needs to be like this. And I, yeah, I sort of accidentally came to them with a fully fledged show. So I think I was just an easy pick, really. Yeah. It's nothing about me. It was that they don't have to put much work <laughs> with me. Which is Do you, well, I think what shocked me was because you are, um, like a sexy content creator, I thought the BBC are very like no sex please we're British, aren't they? Um, in general. Yeah. So to take on someone who makes spicy content, I thought, bloody hell, things must be changing. Yeah, I do think that it's a uh, very much things are changing slowly, but we're getting there. And there have been so many more shows that have included sex workers in and not having them be a criminal or a murder victim which has been <laughs> great it's, it's been lovely to see myself on screen and not feel sad immediately which is great and one of like the best shows ever in my opinion was um secret diary of a call girl and there's just been nothing like that since yeah so uh, i think it kind of appealed to them to have a show that calls back to something that was such a massive success, but isn't quite the same as a bit of a modern twist on it. Cause some parts of that show have not aged well, but there we go. But yeah, it was, it was shocking that in, in all like the press things they were saying queer sex worker from Lancashire. Like I've, I've kind of made the BBC be associated with sex work. And I yeah. love it. Well, yes. it's a good thing, I think. Yeah, you're great. the pioneer of that, aren't you? So that's like great for you. I mean, it feels good. I've had a lot of messages being like, this is amazing and you're opening doors and I just kind of feel like I've accidentally stuck my head in a room and gone, can I just can I just yeah. have all your attention for a moment and also your money and also I'm going to leave the door open so that more sex workers can come through. Yeah, Thank you. Well, it's important to be represented and when you see someone that you identify with on TV you think, oh, my God, well, I can do that then as well. Yeah. And that is yeah. so important, especially for, like, people of colour and things like that, you know, and, like, LGBTQ community. There's, for a long time, there was just nothing like that. You can't, you just didn't see people that were diverse on the BBC or anywhere, really. Not at all. And people that were, like, there were black TV shows and if there was a gay couple in the TV show, it's a gay show. So yeah. that's, it only appeals to those people, whereas there's so much more coming out now where there just happens to be a character who's a stripper. And I think movies like um, Hustlers with Jennifer Lopez, that's done like such a massive thing because people are going, oh, strippers can be cool and very clever. And it's just, it's lovely seeing that come through as well. Yeah. I like it. I'm excited to be part of... Um, I, I don't want to say movement, but I'm excited to be at the at the head of this um, the ship taking sex work to the mainstream in a positive way. Yeah, definitely. 
We just think like how far things come in like a short space of time, like 10 years, for example. If you just think like 10 years time, people are going to look back and they're going to be like, oh, yeah, B-Ducks, she was the one. There's going to be like a statue unveiled of you. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Oh, stop it. I'll get a big head. Oh, my (laughs) God. Ooh. Yeah, it is. It's very much still. I'm like teetering on imposter syndrome, like. I'm trying to constantly like no I deserve to be here and I'm doing this for this reason and there's a little part of me going yeah but they've accidentally chosen you instead of someone else wait until <laughs> they find out get kicked out oh my god keep your little head down <laughs> that's what we do don't we keep your head down no one's gonna notice <laughs> <laughs> yeah and just hope People that that's starting how there. everyone else feels as well yeah so they're busy thinking about how they shouldn't be there they don't notice that you shouldn't be there either. <laughs> that's, how, that's how we look at things. Well, actually, I should congratulate you on uh, joining the Distraction Pieces Network. Thank you. Yeah. Incredible. I not believe it, could so we? Uh, keep your head down and not get noticed when you're part of the biggest network in the UK. I know. Well, we think, like, there's been a terrible mistake here. If we just don't <laughs> talk in the group message, just keep, keep your head down. Just yeah. <laughs> no one noticed. They won't realise that we're here. We've crept in. Yeah, I know. And they keep like people keep saying stuff to us, and we we don't know what that what it means. Like, <laughs> oh, can we just have a look at your setup? And we're like, yeah, sure. What do you want? Our email address. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you've got to fake it till you make it. So we're like, yeah, we know everything. We know what yeah. you're talking about. Oh, we are entirely faking it, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, God, massively. <laughs> but it was really nice. And actually, like, when we heard our advert over um, one of the episodes already, um, we didn't realise, but we're the, the first ready-made podcast that has been asked to join the network because everyone sort of started there and then got their podcast. But they obviously liked the flavour and so mm-hmm. they had, we'll take, some, we'll have a bit of that. Yeah. I can't believe it though. Everyone needs a bit of it, don't they? Yeah. Everyone needs a bit of sex in their life. Yes. I was very excited when Pip said that you were joining. I was like, yes. Oh, this is amazing. I love them. <laughs> I love those guys. <laughs> very, oh. very, very pleased for you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, I mean, we could talk about ourselves all day. But <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to carry on. And we're gonna, <laughs> this is no exception. <laughs> but we do have some questions to ask you. We're all here to find out the answers to these questions, B. I'm ready. So we're going to start. What is your most embarrassing sex moment? Right. I was trying to think of a time where I was like really embarrassed, but. I feel like every moment I've had that I've been embarrassed in the moment, I now laugh at, or it was like a learning moment. Like I used to find like quite so embarrassing and I'd be like, oh no, oh, just get away from me. And now it makes me laugh if it happens. I think it's that whole, it was connected with, if, if, if that's making a farting noise, that means there's air in there. And that means that I'm loose enough to let air in. And just that whole thing of you're supposed to be tight and not turned on at all. And it's supposed to be good for them. And it's just now it's just, that's a funny noise and farts are always funny. No matter how old you are. Farts will always be funny and queefs are just even funnier. It's a nice little hilarity respite in the middle of all the pattern. Yeah. As someone um, mentioned queefs before, actually, on the podcast and said that it's a compliment. Is it? I like that. Yeah. A compliment. Yeah. So if you queef, it's like because, you know, you're turned on and. And only something like big can like create that sort of suction <laughs> <Wasn't it? laughs> I can't yeah. remember what I, yeah you know I suppose like you know how they say like burping is a compliment to the food it's like yeah. a, is a compliment to the sex very very yeah. true and they're and not gonna um, stop are they like I'm, I've never encountered anyone who has said like oh I queefed and then they wouldn't have sex with me they wouldn't carry on so I just think I just don't like well, the word grief. I think that's my only issue with it. Yes, like, I don't else like is fine, that. But less come up with like a better word. Queef. Oh. <laughs> Although I to be fair, right, I did 
my deplore. So as we're in this conversation, a time has just come back into my memory that I think I might have blocked out before now. Um, because I remember being at a party and like meeting this guy and we're like really getting on and it was like after everyone had, I right, okay. Spoiler, I thought everyone had gone home. And me and him were in his bedroom getting it on and I queefed and I heard laughter from the same room. Oh and no. he just like stopped and like two of his friends had snuck in and well first of all, very weird. They'd snuck in and were watching, creepy as fuck. But like they'd started laughing, which then made him laugh. And then I was just kind of traumatized, like, oh my God, I've just queefed. And his friends are watching us have sex. This is, this is, this is not okay. Oh no, what do I do? This is so embarrassing and also disgusting. And I think the back of my mind, I'd completely blacked that out. Oh my God. That is, <laughs> that is fucking there you go. It is a bit, isn't it? Yeah. Like lurking in the darkness. Yeah. That started as a funny story, and now I think I should probably speak to a therapist about it. Yeah, that's a lot. A lot of our stories are like that. We're like, oh, I've got this funny story, and as it goes on, you just think, oh, that's not funny actually. That's quite yeah. sad. <laughs> me, honestly, me and my mum do that all the time. Me and my mum will be like, oh, do you remember when this happened? And by the end of the story, we'll be like, that wasn't all right. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Most of my childhood ends in, are you all right? <laughs> are you <laughs> are you okay. Oh God, yeah. yeah. Well, it seems like a joke at the time because you have to make it into a joke because otherwise you just crumble. Yeah. 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 If you don't laugh about it, you're crying about it. Yeah. 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 You go home and you cry in private. In front of people. Fucking hell. Or like, yeah, you just block it out of your memory. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever happened. That's been happening a lot lately. Like I've, I've, I think I've reached a stage in my life where I'm a bit chill. I've moved by the sea and I'm like living a really nice, calm life. So now my brain's gone. She can handle this now. And it's just throwing flashbacks at me. And every other week I'm, I'm messaging Pip saying, I've just had, I've just, I've just had a flashback of something really fucking horrible that happened. I don't know where it's come from, but it, it's definitely a memory. Isn't it weird? Our brains just like block stuff out and then go, you can handle it now. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> well, it does. It just like puts it away. They're like, no, not not today she can't deal with that yeah. <laughs> not this week <laughs> yeah <laughs> not today is it not today <laughs> yeah my whole childhood like I if anyone talks about their childhood I've blocked my whole childhood yeah. the whole thing mm-hmm. so even if even the good stuff yeah because it's like yeah. no and the moment anyone mentions it I'm like I don't know it's gone it's completely gone but yeah every now and then something will just yeah. be like yeah like that it's yeah. horrid, isn't it? I have like random pinpoints of of like big memories, but the rest is just very blurry. Like when I was younger, I gave my mum a nosebleed twice in one week because one time I punched her in the face and then later on the week we went swimming and I jumped in the water and kicked her in the face. <laughs> and then that like, th- that's the memory I have of being that age. There's nothing else. It's which so makes it <laughs> stuff, stuff happened then. <laughs> stuff has happened to you. <laughs> Oh no. Oh, oh. trauma. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on from the trauma. Yeah. <laughs> even though even though the next question is about trauma. <laughs> <laughs> and it is trauma is funny. Yeah. Um, it is. If you laugh at it, it is. <laughs> it is. I can't help but laugh at it. We did the same thing when we first started the Two Girls One Shop podcast. We were like, oh yeah, we've got loads of funny stories from the sex shop. But when we started telling them, we were talking about them, it was that realisation, like, this isn't funny. <laughs> this mm. is not funny. What Someone's walked in and wanked <laughs> on my leg. It's like, that's oh, sexual dear. assault. <laughs> that's not <laughs> yeah. a funny story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I worked down summers when I was 19, and there were the stuff that happened in there that at the time was like, what a weirdo. It's not like, what a criminal. We should yeah. have Well, you're just like, oh, God, another man has wanked on me whilst I'm, like, giving him a receipt. Yeah. And we yeah. are just kind of taught, I mean, to go all feminist, we are just taught as women that boys will be boys, let them do whatever they want, we've just got to accept it, move on, don't make a big deal, when yeah. in actuality a lot of us have been through assault and very traumatising things and we've just not realised. 
yeah yeah because it's not called assault is it when it happens to us no <laughs> exactly okay. or it's not assault yeah. when you're in a relationship spicy memories <laughs> Okay, right. Where is the weirdest place you've had sex? I don't know is the answer to this question. I think maybe, um, I mean, maybe uh, again, it was another house party. This isn't good, is it? Another house party, probably in the toilet of the house party and then coming out and being congratulated. That was very weird. I didn't enjoy that. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going to give you like a smash and a scepter. Right. <laughs> Great performance. <laughs> Queen toilet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I've had, I've had fairly regular sexual encounters, and like in bedrooms and bathrooms, which is now quite weird. Actually, is a bathroom a weird place to have sex? Um, yeah, I think so. Anywhere that's not a bed, I think, is a weird place to have sex because, like, it just is taken for granted that you just do it in a bed, don't you? Now that you're like adults, yeah, yeah. And unless you're like a voyeur yeah. type person, then I guess yeah, anywhere that isn't a bed is like a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I have like a there was a, I've forgotten what the film is, but there's a movie really really old where the guy's fucking the girl against a window in a really tall building, and I. I ended up watching that when I was very young. So now I have, a, I have a thing for windows. I don't know what it is. I mean, I don't know what it is. I know it's what that. it is. <laughs> I know what it is. It's for watching that when I was way too young. And now I'm like, look at me, have sex, everybody. But I'm really into windows. So the past few hotels that um, I've stayed in, it's, it was with him. I can't lie. We've been together for too long for me to be like, in a past relationship. No, it was with him. <laughs> <laughs> We've booked hotels that are like very high up. It's very big windows because... I I just really enjoy it. Yeah, I just I really like it. If someone happens to look and sees me, I'm like, mm, oh, I'm just enjoying oh, myself. Only me. Just me. I should I get like, a little plaque with my handle. It's not a weird place to have sex, but I would say that that was quite like adventurous. I think. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe like on um, this one guy had he lived with his friends, and it was like an open plan house like an old converted barn so you go up the stairs and then the banister in the living room is above like the kitchen and another living room and we did have sex against that banister but no one was in but if someone sure. was in again so they weren't waiting around in the background mm. <laughs> mm. yeah i think a lot of my things that are more weird are actually just more risky maybe that's what i'm into maybe i'm finding out right now that uh, really? i'm into ah danger things maybe i am thanks guys you've helped me uh, <laughs> you're welcome i work here stuff. Day, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, who was your first celebrity crush hey, right okay this one i don't i don't understand it was when i was really young and it's the original artful dodger from oliver twist there's just oh. something I know I don't it, I don't I don't know I just remember being really young and being like I just really want to hold his hand and run around the streets and steal from people with him and have like a mucky face and and yeah I just I, I just really want to be a little street urchin yeah I wanted to be a, I wanted to maybe I saw parts of me in him I don't know I'm gonna have and a now he's very just, charismatic I think that's what it is it's and now I, Growing older, I'm a pansexual human, and I think it was just his personality really hit something in my tummy, where I was like, oh, he's a bit cheeky, isn't he? Oh, he's a bit nice. And then I feel like there's the, the very obvious, the cast of The Mummy, because young Brendan Fraser and that entire cast, I feel like that's an answer for everybody. Like, that awoke something in all of us, I believe. Yeah, Brendan Fraser, oh, my God, in, like, sand-coloured trousers and... Yeah, Rachel Weiss as well when she's dressed up in the oh. Egyptian. Oh my God, yes. Oh, God. Oh, yes. I've forgotten all about him. Wasn't he oh. so fucking dreamy? Mm hmm. Oh. Even him as George of the Jungle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the bits. I've actually just got up the, <laughs> the picture of the Artful Dodger. Um, and for the sake of this conversation, 
I'm not going to uh, really show him off <laughs> because he is nine years old. So, oh, okay. I mean, I don't think we should be thinking about having well, sex. Well, yes. Him. I mean, we're not, yeah. We're talking mm. about, you know, when you're a kid. Yeah. And but you then, like other kids. I don't think that's nonsense, is it? No. I had a boyfriend when I was five who was also five. So, well, there you go then. You know, oh. I so, thought, right? That's fucking boasting. Well, you know, look out. Yeah. Oh, okay then. Well, we can stick with the mummy fun. because they're all adults. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, 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 in the interest of sexualizing people, I think we should just go with an adult. <laughs> yeah, we should just sexualize the adults. <laughs> Not grubby little nine year old street urchin. <laughs> Maybe that's short, but look. <laughs> oh I mean it's God. dangerous it does it it fits it fits with the uh I mean it does a bit it could catch anything Christ oh god yeah oh. my touch was um Richard Fairbrass from Right to Fred mm. which makes me feel a bit weird considering yours was a nine-year-old artful dodger and mine was a strapping bald-headed gay man <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when you fancied right, said Fred? I I don't know. I, I remember it was the first time I ever had seen, like, a man and thought, oh, okay, well, I fancy men, I think. When was it? <laughs> well, the song was very sexy. It was just him, like a little string vest and, like, leather pants. I can have a day off, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Maybe oh, a string vest and leather pants. Oh, yeah. I mean, my tastes have not changed. I'm not going to lie. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look, this. It's this. Can you see him? Oh, oh. damn. Okay. Oh. Mm-hmm. I can get on board. Was that his brother? Yeah. I think so. They're brothers, weren't they? Were they brothers? Were they companions? <laughs> they were very similar to each other. They were very oh. good friends. Yeah. Oh, I wonder when that... So... I'm Too Sexy was released in 2000. No. No, no. way. Was don't, it 2007? Lie, don't lie to me, Google, That's mugging right. me off on my own podcast. <laughs> Look. 1992. How old was I in 1992? Five. Okay, five. So, yeah, that's wrong. Well, I feel worse. I wish it was a nine-year-old Apple Dodger now. From a very, very <laughs> young age, and I mean very young my crush where I was like oh my god over a man was um Sean Bain and Sharp so I was very oh young gosh. as well yeah I fucking proper no. fancy Sean Bain proper I still fancy Sean Bain oh yeah I still fancy Sean Bain. Yeah. I can't it's the accent oh, it feels too much like old. listening to a family member oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah the accents yeah. not do it for you Scottish accents, yes. I used to love Irish accents, and then one of my best friends was cheated on by an Irish guy. So now I can't, I can't hear it without being like you. Bastard. <laughs> and uh, yeah, at the minute, yeah, Scottish, Scottish is doing it for me at the moment. Yeah, and also Essex. Pip, love you. Essex is my favourite. Yeah, because of us, obviously, it's nothing to do with you, yeah. Pip. Grip. Well, yeah, <laughs> you guys and uh, my partner definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll let him come in close second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, accents don't really do it for me. I've got to say. Oh, I like accents. Yeah, I don't yeah. like to do too much work. I just want to know what you're saying. <laughs> I don't want to it. think about it. I love an accent because I hate the Essex accent, and I've been out with so many guys that are from Essex. I can't fucking bear it. I cannot bear it. If someone's got a little bit of flavour about it, then yeah. I'm all over it. A little bit of sauce. Yeah. Ooh, have you got a favourite? Like a Spanish or an Italian, if you're saying saucy. Mm. Have I got a favourite? I don't know. I don't know if I've got a favourite. I do like Scottish. I like Russian. I've been out with someone from Sheffield. I like that. Okay, interesting. I like Irish. <laughs> You went from Russia. I went out with someone that was Ukrainian. Oh, that was sexy. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, all of them. All the accents. I feel like up. I was like sleeping with a James Bond villain if I dated someone Russian. Yeah, well, that was the whole deal, wasn't it? Ugh. 
gangster. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do your clothes off. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. It's just like, just like pull a gun out from somewhere and, oh, I'm so sorry. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't mind that actually thinking about it, but I don't. I mean, an everyday conversation would do my head in, but if it's just to get your clothes off, oh yeah, I don't have conversations with men anyway. From the just entirety to, of everything, I've been just, 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 just to clear that up. <laughs> These are the phrases you can use. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I had a French guy once come into the shop when we were working in the shop. And um, he wanted to get something sexy to take home to his girlfriend. And he was so hot, but just like mm. in like a nice suit, but he was really like shy and and he had the mm. um, French accent. And what he picked out was like a pair of pajamas, but like little shorts. And he was like, oh, this is really sexy, you know? So he wasn't even into like the sexy, sexy stuff. He just found mm. like a nice okay. little cotton like pajama set and I just thought fucking hell mate yeah why is that hot it just is French women for me oh, yeah. yeah that that accent on a woman I yeah. what I loved when I've been to France before is like the women have absolutely no time for the men they're just like Great. get away from me I'm enjoying a coffee and a cigarette and I'm looking yeah. beautiful they will not entertain French men at all and I love that vibe and they can sit there and smoke and look sexy whereas if you're British and you're smoking it's disgusting <laughs> isn't it it is though it looks so bad yeah yeah mm. but if you're French and you're at a cafe thing. and you're just like yeah 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 they're sexy okay so we're gonna have to get a farm in France yeah oh, well yeah 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 like it I'm Actually. there I'm there already um Excellent. Well, what's your go-to sex song? I feel like everybody's is Nine Inch Nails. I feel like that's just a... I want to disappoint you. <laughs> <laughs> that that's just the version of that song is what <laughs> that everyone's fucking to. <laughs> it's Pub Fair by B-Docs and it'll be on SoundCloud this weekend. <laughs> Great. But I'll tell you what, nothing beats... Go by Delilah for masturbation. My God, I that song is just I just put it in my headphones and I lay back and I've got like a wand or a vibrator or whatever. I'm usually a glass toy, love glass. Glass toys are the best. Just that song, there's something about it that just makes you go, Oh my god, my entire body is listening to this song right now, and I'm going to come at the same time. So interesting that you have like a masturbation song because yeah. I wouldn't think I wouldn't even consider putting music on to have a wank do it i don't have time no i'm like <laughs> get this done we're yeah, on a tight schedule here yeah yeah <laughs> quick just zzz, done can't no. mess up. maybe we should yeah maybe we Love should yourself. Make yeah treat yourself like make it more of a, like a light some candles yeah like a little bit of like devotion to time to yourself mm. make it a whole big of R &R. thing yeah yeah I yes. didn't even consider. I didn't even consider After it. The late night shower, moisturize everything, and then when you're feeling all, mm, maybe you like change your bed sheets so you're on fresh sheets, oh. fresh shaved legs. Beyonce haunted is also another good one. Oh yeah, I love that one. Mhm. Mm oh. oh, I just want to go and have a wank now. I'm just thinking about those songs being like really good. Yeah, they're not very like they're not. I don't think they're very good like sex songs, but for solo, yeah, very good. Yeah. God, I love the idea of a of, of wank song. Do you have a playlist? I don't. I I I have at times, but I don't have one now. And I I'm still like me and Pip regularly laugh about Stu, just not knowing about sex playlists. It just are <laughs> oh, just the thought of him just like in complete silence or putting a record on. Just it just makes me laugh so much. Yeah. Oh, that's that is pretty much every interaction we have with Pip is us talking about Stu having sex in silence because <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. I'll never get over it. I don't think he'll never get over us talking about it either. No. Well, we spoke to Carol. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. We interviewed Carol, 
um, and she tells a completely different story. So, you know, it's just that, so heard that episode, go mm. and listen to it because I mean, that woman was saying stuff that was turning me on. Yeah. Carol. I, Carol know. I know. I was so shocked. I was so shocked. And I just think, why has Stu got all the podcasts when Carol could just be like being sexy about the place? Yeah. Well, Carol's got her own now. She's doing a true crime yeah. podcast. Yeah. We listened to one of the episodes on the way to Wales. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why we had her on. Because we thought, oh, let's let's have Carol on. We'll we'll test the waters, yeah, see Carol if we can get some info about Stu out there. She just opened up <laughs> and just freaking told us everything. And it was sexy. Oh, my days. I know. Oh, my days. I know. Carol. Carol, I know. I'm unsuspecting, sweet, innocent Carol. Yeah. Sweet Carol is actually saucy Carol. Who knows? Yeah. Very yeah. much so. I mean, it's it's murder. it doesn't get more saucy than that. Mm. Very true. Very <laughs> true. Although I feel like Stu now needs to be fully interrogated in the most well, awkward way possible that's the thing as much as i don't want to know about she having sex because it's one of those things that i like to think just doesn't happen um <laughs> but now i'm a little bit like i kind of do want to know mm. oh, yeah i mean carol was saying stew has got an awful memory mm. and that's the problem but i don't know i don't know if maybe he's just you know you have like a round mm. table Sex with Charlie and Nina episode, and we'll get Pip, Stu, Carol, me, you guys. It'll be great. Yeah, we'll a do full, like a Christmas full special. round table and table. Yeah. Yes. Oh my god, like a drunk cast. Yeah. yeah. I know. Well, we're desperate to be on drunk cast. We we haven't been invited, but I feel we could just invite ourselves. I think this year. This year. Yeah. I'll make it happen. I'll force it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> yeah. oh. Mm-hmm. yeah it's gonna be good I'll sort um, out. yeah okay so this question is gonna seem a bit I don't know if it's gonna seem a bit redundant because your content creator on um only fans so I'm guessing you've done some pretty kinky stuff yeah I I that question's always a bit um in my own time like I mean, the very, very thing is, like, what I consider typical, like things like tying up and gagging and things like that. That for me just feels quite. If you're going to experiment, those are things you're going to do. Yeah. Whereas things like for work, I'm now on Fansly rather than OnlyFans. And oh, okay. Like things like a 10 minute video that's just a close up of my nipples, of me just twitching my nipples, or me oiling up my belly button and putting oil in there and then sticking my finger in the belly button to get all the oil out. Like there's things like that that are just very, very niche that I really enjoy doing because it doesn't take a lot of effort no. and it costs a lot of money for them. And I enjoy doing it. It's fun. Silly stuff that I wouldn't do otherwise. Yeah, kinks mm. are so weird, aren't they? Like the more normal something is, I think the weirder it feels yeah. like you know when you hear kinks like oh I want to be pissed on you just think oh okay that's the thing but when someone's <laughs> like fill your belly button up with oil and scoop it out to me that just is like what are you getting from this yeah people will pay for anything if it's if you can think of it it is a kink already yeah, it's yeah. any character from any tv show ever there's a kink for that it's oh, great it's the weirdest yeah. one I can think of well, we um, we spoke to someone once that said that people uh, want videos of her sitting on a beach ball. Okay, I was That's like, fairly... "What?" And, like she's getting like five hundred quid to like sit on a beach to, like, ball, like crush it, like just like is, she, ba- is she bouncing? Yeah, just like moving she... around and just yeah, just oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's like balloons and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I've so I have fair. seen that sort of thing before, and I do like to every now and then when I hear something new, I like to have a little look into it and just see, yeah, see what's what. But when you don't have a sexual connection to something, I think it makes it like a little bit weird, weirder. Yeah, well, I suppose it's other people finding it weird that that turns them on even more yeah. because it is a bit of a taboo. 
And it's how do you find out that you like to watch someone pouring oil into their belly button? I don't know. Because there's like, some that triggered that. Because no, yeah. I, you don't just wake up and go, do you know what would be really hot? It Brilliant. must start from like really young, like like not being able to leave your own belly button alone and then noticing belly buttons on other people and then imagining things going in them and then <laughs> thinking about belly button. And yeah, I mean, usually, I say usually, the, the men that I've had the belly button things with before, because there's been more than one, have been very small penis did did. Oh. Um, so I think they're imagining fucking a belly button and being able to fill it up. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, from the conversations I've had with them. Because I do like to chat, because so often there'll be these people that are like, really want to have their kinks fulfilled, they're willing to pay for it, and then they'll find someone that will do like a custom content video or photo set, but then they don't want to talk about it, and it's a bit like, I'm going to take your money, but I don't want to talk about what's happening. Whereas it's, I find it a lot better for them and for me to kind of get into why they like it and have yeah. a conversation about it so that they feel a bit more um, like a person. And then they're more likely to come back and ask for more content, which is nice. Yeah. But it's a lot easier for me creating it and doing the stuff if I know why they're into it. Yeah, well, you can tailor it to what yeah. they actually want. Because if you know that it's, oh, it's because they like to fill it up, then that you can make something that recreates that moment. Yeah, and even adding in like the smaller sentences like oh do you like when I do this knowing that that's going to be a button for them because yeah. then they're like I loved when you said that whereas if you haven't really had that conversation with them and you don't know that that's a trigger point yeah then it's like yeah you did that bit but you kind of skipped over it and that's the bit that I really like so could you do that again what is the yeah. most strange request you've had sorry this isn't part of the question now I've just I've, <laughs> I've gone off I, I think Probably, probably the belly buttons. Or they had um, I had a request for forty images of the back of my shoulder, which was okay. for exactly forty images, and it was like a like a pan of the back of it. They must have turned it into a video or something. I don't know, done it themselves because a the photo set's cheaper than a video, so they must have like put it together. I don't know. Their <laughs> choice. It's just it's just odd stuff that's like I don't understand how or why that's a fetish for you but okay a shoulder cool sweet yeah. mm. but there are people out there that do a lot more adventurous stuff like the full rubber bodysuits and stuff like that I or like wrapping in cling film like I don't oh, yeah. I don't think I would be able to do that I don't know the idea of not being able to get out of the situation I'm okay relinquishing control as long as I know in the back of my head I can say stop at any time. Whereas, imagine if you're like cling filmed up, you can't physically get out. Well, I bought it's some um, cling film by Baco Foil. I don't even care that I'm saying their name because they should be shamed about this. And I know they generally <laughs> make tin foil, but they also make cling foil and it's cling film and it is the worst cling film i've ever fucking used in my life so you you'd have no worry if you tried to wrap yourself up in that because you could it literally just fall off you anyway excellent and what brand was that again yeah baco foil baco foil Bake stick off. to tin foil right why are you Bake cornering off. all of the market you don't need to do cling film well maybe it is it's tin foil yeah. yeah maybe it's made for people like me who need to get out of it quick yeah Maybe it is. I mean, if it is, they should change the branding on it. Well, no. Yeah. What if you're one of those people that don't like going into sex shops and buying like bondage tape and stuff? Yeah, true. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's like it's like massagers. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, they could like they could market it as as being the perfect wrap for the reluctant bondage participant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, dear. Why not? I mean, we're doing them some free advertising here, but honestly, save your fucking money. And it was expensive as well. Like, you can buy little clean film and it works better. The ripper's not as good on, on the little packet. You know, the little jaggedy. I never use that anyway. I, ne I can never no. get it to work, so I always just sort of go poke, poke, Especially poke. on clean film. I, I can't even tell you how many rolls of clean film I've just fucking dashed because I can't get, like, a big <laughs> bit of clean film out. 
I'm all about reusing <laughs> plastic tubs anyway. Yeah, I am. I've got too girl. many of them. I don't think they would fit in a tub. It's not very <laughs> useful for you. They could try. Yeah. I suppose. Kind of, it, I mean, how many pieces you cut you into? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I did have to do, um, it was after Killing Eve. There's a scene in Killing Eve where she um, unfolds herself from a suitcase. Oh, yeah. And I did have a request to get into a suitcase and zip it up. Um, and I have quite a, a deceptively large suitcase, so it was very easy for me to do. But that's a, that's a video that I was asked to do. That was really fun, actually. Was it easy? Yeah, I wasn't even that? naked. That was just, in some underwear, please will you get into a suitcase? Although thinking about it, there's probably quite a nefarious reason for that why do you want a girl in a suitcase yeah are mm. you just seeing if a girl will fit in a suitcase did he ask for the dimensions of the suitcase <laughs> no <laughs> yeah I probably, I probably won't um i won't ask too much about that <laughs> yeah when, they, yeah. when it's a request like that i think it is probably more sinister than it is sexy maybe just wanted it's a suitcase sick. recommendation Maybe. We did talk a lot about that Killing Eve episode, though, so I think that's what probably distracted me from asking about it. I was like, yeah, it's from Killing Eve. Joe Coma. Fit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And it's okay. Give that. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. She's got one of those faces that's just, no matter what face she pulls or where she's looking or the direction, she's just, oh, my God, stunning. Yeah, she's really photogenic, isn't she? Yeah. Every time I see a picture of her doing anything, she's, and she nails that accent as well, doesn't she? And Killing oh eight. my god every accent i think mm -hmm. she's been on distraction pieces i think Has she? Yeah, she was. i think so oh my god is that everyone on oh is yeah like yeah. Friends with you on twice honestly that man is friends with everybody if, if i'm ever with friends and they mention in passing a celebrity my instant reaction is to go oh it's friends with them and <laughs> i piss myself off doing it so i'm just like i'm just not gonna i'm just gonna be quiet now because no matter who you're talking about my boyfriend's gonna know them yeah but who the only person i really care that he's friends with is brett goldstein oh lovely brett oh he's the loveliest man ever yeah loveliest man everyone says it carol he's described hooked. him as a hunk the other day <laughs> <laughs> he is he is a hunk isn't he you like if you if you ever get a hug from him it's like being enveloped by like a really strong blanket i just I don't, I don't Pardon? He's hugged you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've had a hug from Brett Goldstein. Oh, oh, oh my. <laughs> Next time <laughs> film it and I'll buy it off you on a fan <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Content. I think I turn into liquid. Like just or, or did you ever see the advert where everything turned into Skittles? Just burst and turned into yes. Skittles. I'd I'd be Skittles. <laughs> I wouldn't survive that. No, I fucking literally just disintegrate. I think. Do you film all your content yourself, or do you have helpers? Yes, yeah, so I do it. <laughs> Conventional little helpers, just yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I do it. I do it all myself. Yeah, I had um, a bit of a passion for photography before I started doing all of this, so I kind of had all the gear and some idea and. Yeah, now I uh, I do it all myself, which is fun. But it's nice because I have all the stuff I can help other people as well. So, like, if my friends are feeling a bit shit or learning wrong content, I'll just be like, right, come over here, bring some lingerie, I'll shoot you, I'll edit it, it'll all be fine. So it's nice uh -oh. to be able to do that as well. Oh, that's so, nice. Uh, yeah, if I ever get to the point where I don't want to do it anymore and for some reason my writing for the BBC hasn't taken off, which is never going to happen, but just in case... I could go into being behind the camera as well, which is nice. I have too many fingers and too many pies. That's my problem. Can you ever have too much going on, though? It's good to have, like, all the strings to the bow, isn't it, yeah. I think? Aren't we talented? I yeah. guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Especially I, um, when you do it yourself as well, because you have control over your, like, content, don't you? I think when you enter too many people into it, that's when you lose a bit of control over it yeah I have like because I used to shoot for like magazines and stuff and I have received images back and just thought oh that's such lazy editing like can you send me that image and I'll just because you've left a little thing I've got like a smudge there and it's not been taken out or like I've clearly missed shaving my knee and you've left the hair on so there's, <laughs> there's little 
<laughs> where I'm just like, oh, I wouldn't have missed that or oh, I would have edited it this way. And now it's like, just don't work with other people. Clearly, yeah. you don't like it. You like to have last say of everything. So just don't do it anymore. Yeah. yeah. And you look yeah. at things differently, don't you? Like, I know when yeah. we like had things done and, you know, filmed bits and bobs and I will notice like something and just think, oh, fucking hell. What's that? What's that now? Yeah, but it's stuff that you wouldn't notice on other people. Like, oh, yeah. I, I like hate my eye bags, oh. but I couldn't tell you if my mum had them because I don't look at her eye bags. Yeah. So why is it the first thing I look at with me? Very odd. Yeah. Brains, man. <laughs> Brains. I nice every pore yeah. on my face. <laughs> but it is that uh, you do that though, don't you? Even if yeah. someone takes a picture of you or like a group, like a family picture and you have a look your eyes go straight to you and you're like what's wrong with me in that picture <laughs> yeah you don't ever look at anyone else no oh, just the way brains work are just like I I did um I did like a diploma undergraduate thing in psychology and just the way brains work are so weird so weird I love it I love yeah, it though love, it. love a bit of mm. psychology yeah yeah psychology and criminology Oh, love studying. If everything else failed, I'd go back and study that as well. I did like a social oh. sciences course and it was so much fun. If you could succeed at one thing, I mean, you've obviously succeeded at stuff already, but your next thing, what would it be? Would it be Pricing. the wrong thing? Is that your? Yeah. Yeah, I think like I've, I had a meeting with the big bosses a couple of weeks ago and they were saying like how are you finding being in the building and how are you finding it all? And it's very odd to kind of go into such a massive corporate space and feel like I'm kind of supposed to be there. Like as soon as I sit down in BBC Studios and I start, like I'm working on a script at the minute and it just feels like I'm supposed to be doing it. It feels really, really nice. So um, they've been very kind and said like, oh, do you feel like you found your calling? I'm like, yeah, I think I have. So you're going to have to hire me after this placement. Like, I'm really sorry, but you've, you're going to have to find a wage from somewhere because this is what I'm supposed to be doing now and I'm not giving them the line your back so <laughs> I work for you you don't work here anymore uh, yes I do <laughs> I just you're sitting in the staff room making yourself a coffee <laughs> they're just going to up and move the whole yeah. of the BBC yeah. to a different place just so you can't get <laughs> restraining order there'll be a little picture behind the front desk saying don't let this woman in <laughs> well no, but they won't They'll be absolutely mad not to just chuck a load of money at you. Yeah. Anyway, so this conversation. That's so sweet. Thank you. (laughs) I've I've been very clear that no matter what I'm writing, every show or film or short or anything will always include sex workers. And I want to hire sex workers that like have a passion for videography or whatever. I want to make sure that I'm bringing in sex workers to every aspect of the shows that I make. So I think they are cautious, but on board with it, which feels yeah. nice. Well, they like, you know, mm. sex workers aren't just like massive records. They're, they're business people. Oh, we're not. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that like, with having you there, obviously, once they've kind of seen you and worked with you, they realise that sex workers are humans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, massively. You know. Yeah. In my, like, initial... Um, like you could send over a paragraph thing and I've I put in there that I'm absolutely sick of sex workers either being a background character that gets assaulted or a criminal themselves or they're just a punchline to a joke. Like I'm, f- I'm so fucking sick of it and I'd rather have either a sex worker be the protagonist of the show or the antagonist and have them be yeah. flawed in all aspects and not just be like there was a show called adult material that was really really good I oh yeah actress. that was really good yeah oh good because that just it was just such a it showed her in the work position and she's a family woman she's got kids and a partner and like yes we can be flawed too but don't make that the only part of us and make it because we're a sex worker yeah that's just bullshit well that's the thing I know people that work in my banks who are absolutely fucked so, I mean, it's, yeah. it's like, it doesn't matter, does it? And I think it normalises sex work if you show that they're not 
you never get to see the background where they go home to their kids and like mm-hmm. their loving partners and things like that. Like they just yeah. seem to think you live in like a crack den and you just like <laughs> off your nut all the time. Yeah. And you live in this hardly any crack in my den. Think, no. <laughs> Barely ever have crack in my den. Yeah. Ever. No. I mean, the, I've got a den, but there are no crack here. Exactly. So, yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there is, there's so much to it that people don't understand. Like even having a site, even having like a profile on OnlyFans or Fansly, there's so much admin that goes into it. Like I'm currently having one of the worst months I've had in ages and it's because I'm not doing the admin because I'm focusing on other things. And there's so much that goes on behind it. And having websites like OnlyFans and Fansly has created such an immediate... Um, I can't think of the word, but it's where the, the your audience, your fans have have access to you immediately. And if you aren't responding within an hour, they get pissed off and then they're going to ask for a refund because you're not talking to them immediately. Granted, that doesn't happen for all of them and that's not all fans and not all supporters, but there is a percentage of people that will get a charge back or ask for a refund because you haven't responded to them immediately or they yeah. signed up expecting to see this and you don't do that and now they're pissed off. And it's there's there's so much um, customer service that goes into sex work that people just don't think about. It isn't just taking a photo of your tits and putting it on the internet. And the people that do that don't make a lot of money. Yeah, mad. It's just that the you wouldn't ask any other people in any other profession if they felt empowered. There's a really good scene in um, Alma's Not Normal by Sophie Willen which is fantastic featuring Jade Adams love Jade Adams character in that show incredible yeah. but she was saying how you wouldn't go into a call centre and ask if they were empowered by their job it's only sex workers where you go oh but not very feminist is it alright leave us McDonald's chill out yeah that pisses leave me off leave us being a personal assistant to a man yeah leave us being free to a building full of men I work for myself a woman so yeah. to my own hours. It's the most yeah. job, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we, um, we've, we spoke to someone else who um, had an OnlyFans account. Um, and there's a lot of internal, like, judgment as well, we found. Because she was really, really against being labelled as a sex worker. Mm-hmm. And we don't mean anything by the term sex worker other than yeah. you work in the sex industry yeah but yeah that's all that's kind of meant by it but she was so offended by it she's like oh I'm not a sex worker I just take pictures and get money for it and we're like um so there's that's... a little have you ever come across that have you seen that sort of like oh yeah final, like judgment from yeah I mean there's there's um it's a it's a well-known thing on sex worker Twitter that no one will get angrier at a sex worker than another sex worker for saying something they don't agree with. I mean, there's full service sex workers that get pissed off at online content creators for saying that they're sex workers. And then there's online content creators that are like, oh, I'm not a hooker. I'm not a full service sex worker. Like, yeah, but you are a sex worker though. There's a massive umbrella and anything that's in exchange for goods or money that's got a sexual connotation is sex work. You could be doing the admin for a porn site and you're a sex worker. So it, it is always... Would you class us as sex workers? Pardon? Would you class us as sex workers? We've got a podcast about sex. Would that come under? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Yeah, sex workers. So I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. Your podcast is literally sex with you guys. Yeah. So yeah. Well, we said that when we were working in the shop that we, it was, you know, it came under that umbrella of sex worker mm-hmm. even though we weren't actively having sex within it yeah uh, well some people were not not us unfortunately <laughs> um, <Interesting. laughs> um but yeah we were quite shocked that the other person that we'd interviewed was actually quite offended yeah. by the term sex worker yeah. yeah she actually made me delete a post because i'd put a hashtag sex worker oh god yeah so then yeah, after it's that also confusing yeah, yeah, I just thought. Really sorry, I'm. We are currently we are on the same speaking wavelength at the moment. <laughs> oh, sorry. Every time I go to speak, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, go on. 
<laughs> I was just going to say, like the 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 judgment that comes with the job is is just the stigma that's attached to it is such a fucking shame because it means that people like that feel ashamed of the job they're doing. Um, and even when it's when it comes down to survival sex work, whether you like it or not, you're you're a sex worker, and if you hate that term and you're not ready to get on board and fight for sex worker rights because sex worker rights are just normal people's working rights and we deserve the same rights as them and maybe you shouldn't be in the job mind you you say that though but like i really don't think boris johnson should be a politician because he does not have the best interests for this country at heart so people that don't give a fuck about people probably shouldn't be in charge of people there's dickheads in every job (laughs) yeah Yeah. and i think that's you know that's we've had that quite a lot people yeah. say that haven't we yeah like when we spoke to other people from the lgbtq they're like okay well just because they're um a transgender woman doesn't mean that they don't have the potential to be an arsehole they're not getting yeah. away with it because <laughs> yeah of that reason yeah. and it was like who's that guy that um is non-binary the guy that's in flash what's his name not clear ezra ezra miller oh my god there you oh, go. oh is yeah. That name? yeah 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 didn't he get arrested and he was just like oh, i'm non-binary don't touch me you just think mm. you, you you just punch someone in you the face it's a crime i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah so everybody this... has the propensity to be an absolute yeah. cunt yeah but i think that's we where it's gone all a bit mad like people are so scared of like offending other people that they're like oh i know this gay guy he's a lo- lovely man lovely man and you just think what's that got to do with him being gay (laughs) not lovely just because he's gay yeah no but because no he is lovely because he's gay that's it that's the end of the conversation all gay men are charming and funny and dress well and are lovely yes and they're all sassy yeah and they're all bottoms and there's just like normal gay men just pottering about living their lives (laughs) oh the gays God. It's, it's like anything though like the um the character in the in-betweeners who's in a wheelchair and is an absolute dickhead to will like just because you have like a little thing that yeah is with a doesn't mean that you're not a massive dickhead yeah it's you different. don't get a pass yeah yeah not at all you, you get a tiny little bit more of a pass i think than if you're like a straight white man with me oh yeah oh yeah mm-hmm. but well all straight white men yeah, no. if it turns out no. you are actually a dickhead, you're still not. That's you're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, and they're all getting a lot sneakier lately. A lot of white men know that if they pretend to be a feminist, they'll get a lot farther in life. Oh but god, god. yeah. The, we're they, getting good at sniffing them out, though, aren't we? Oh yeah, we've had a few, haven't we? Yeah. I'm I'm a bigger feminist as a, as the next guy. Yeah, I've got daughters. Oh. <laughs> Yes, that's got a month. Yeah, it's so weird how they're feminists, like when they're trying to fuck you. And then as soon as you're like, oh, no, I don't think I want to have sex with you, they forget that they're feminists, don't they? Yes, Uh, and they fucking hate you because you don't want to have sex with them anymore. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're a bitch. Weird. So you're all about choice and consent, just as long as I'm choosing to consent to you. Interesting. Yeah. I love how strong you are, but can you please let me get away with fucking everything? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, nice guy. Like other girls. Other yeah. girls let me walk all over them. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Collecting up your nice guy points, are you? Thinking I'm going to fuck you just because you're a nice guy. Yeah. I've yeah. collected this many and now it's yeah. time to cash in. Get Look at all time. the times I haven't tried to fuck you. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Friends on me. Yeah. The whole time I thought we were going to get together in the end. Yeah, you really a nice me on. <laughs> uh, Right. Well, we've been talking for a little bit over an hour now. Oh God. We have, you know. So, wrap it I'm, I'm going to go and um, test drive a car today, which is quite Are exciting. You? Are you? Yeah, my Are you so scared? Exciting. Um. Yes, but I'm also highly medicated. So that feeling will go in and out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Took my for another 20 minutes and I should be numb as anything, which is great. Oh, well, hopefully you still yeah. be able to drive. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, totally. Get just, in. It just shuts my emotions off. It's fine. <laughs> Stay awake. I just can't feel anything. <laughs> That's what I like. 
Oh, well, I hope you like it. Me too. I hope so. Apparently it's failed its MRT because the horn has stopped working. So, uh, really? yeah. We'll get like a little handheld one. Just, we'll just shout <laughs> out and go, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that one better. I'll just record me saying beep and play it really loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, good luck. Yes. Thank you so Thank much you for so talking much. to us. It was so great to have you on. You. You're so lovely. I'm, like, I'm shocked that Finley has been asleep this whole time because the past few podcasts I've been on, he's been the most attention seeking little turd. And now he's just like, well, he knows us. He yeah. feels safe. He knows us. He yeah. loves us already. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he's like, hello. Mm-hmm. What's that? Sex? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing is, though, right, he's actually, he's, he, I think he was neutered quite young. I rescued him when he was 10 months and he had, like, no scars or anything. And our, um, well, not our, their, Jane's St. Bernard puppy, who's now going through her first proper season, she's, like, bleeding and smells fishy and it's disgusting. But this dog, out of fucking nowhere, has learned how to hump and won't leave her alone. So he probably has heard the word sex. Yeah, and it's now actually. like, I've just learned what this is. Are you going to give me tips? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get away from my oh, legs. You're going to need a few more nice guy points for that. Mm, only a few. <laughs> I'm dog pumping people. Okay. Oh. Right, and on my dog pumping people. Shall we? Uh, yeah. <laughs> say on that, that note. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming on it's been great thank you thank you and congratulations again oh, thank you you look at us winning I know. Life, all of us this is great <laughs> women mm. yeah yeah mm. sex workers <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> okay, you invited to join the sex worker club well done congratulations you're in <laughs> i'm so happy about that 